Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Wolf X C Sharp uh, tutorial series, uh, ship design tutorial series, and we're going to be diverging a little bit from ship design into weapon design and into the uses of various weapons, reasons why you would pick one weapon over another weapon, what is the best weapon for the job, um, discussing what we what each weapon does, some of the more obscure weapons like mesons and microwaves. And just kind of discussing their benefits and their negatives. Um, there'll be images on screen. This is largely again going to be a uh, video where I just talk about, you know, talk about the one the subjects of the video. Um, so there won't be much gameplay, if any at all. Um, another thing to consider as well. These are all my opinions. So feel free to comment below if you feel I'm wrong in some way. With uh, being as long as you're constructive, totally fine. Um, but do keep in mind, disclaimer, this is just my opinion on, on how I see these weapons, on how I look at the weapons, and uh, what they're best and what they're not good at. There's also mechanics that are just facts of how the weapons work, but yeah. If you do like the video, please don't like, comment, and subscribe, it really does help out. Um, the YouTube algorithm is a fickle mistress, and getting more people interested uh, in the video means more people watch it, more people watch it, more people interested, and it's just a circle of life, so please do so. So, let's begin. So. In Aurora 4X C Sharp, there are many kinds of weapons, but they are split into two groups. You have missile weapons, you have beam weapons. Now, there's a little bit of controversy slash opinions on, on, on some things. In the, in the beam weapon category, we have kinetic and we also have energy weapons. Some people will see kinetic weapons as its own separate thing, but I personally see it as under beam weapons as kinetic and then also as... Um, Energy weapons. So energy weapons include anything that requires power, um, and that all that fires a non-kinetic round. Okay, so a railgun and a gorse cannon; those are kinetic weapons, or they come into the kinetic missile and kinetics uh, tech area. Lasers and carronades; those are energy weapons. They require power, and they fire a beam projectile or a energy projectile. Missiles are their own thing, and they, instead of, you know, instead of being, having multiple different kinds of weapons, missiles can be almost anything they want to be. So, for example, we have energy weapons and, and kinetic weapons, which have their own individual kinds of weapons in that, but with missiles, it's its own thing, with um, designing your own missiles accordingly, and if you want, you can go watch my video that I did on that exactly. Uh, but, we're going to basically be discussing both of these different trees, uh, what each of them are best at, and more. So, let's go through the list of what weapons there are on both sides. So, on the beam weapon side, we have gorse cannons. Well, oh yes, I forgot, I've got to mention this. Someone did correct me uh, and say how you're supposed to pronounce um, that. It's gauss, apparently. I call it because it's from a, it's a German pronunciation, so Gauss. So you have Gauss railguns, um, particle beams, particle lances, um, lasers, carronades, mesons, and microwaves. So there's a total of eight or seven, depending on how you count particle lances, um, beam weapons, and they all have their own different benefits and negatives. On the missile side, we just have missiles. Um, and missiles can be anything, that's the difference. So with beam weapons, you pick one or the other of these, these different weapons. With missiles, you just have missiles as a general thing that you can then modify and adjust to what you want to adjust it for. So, um, let's go through the beam weapons first of all. So, Gauss. What is Gauss? What's good about Gauss? Gauss is one of the best point defense weapons um they have great volume of fire um, that scales with each rate of fire attack so that means that as you increase the tech they will fire more shots per tech level so rate of fire four means that a gorse cannon will fire four shots every five seconds um instead of one shot every five seconds or two shots every five seconds this means that they are very good at dealing with um you know, missiles, because they can fire a, a lot of rounds at one salvo at once. And since you can also turret them, they you can add on to that. So if you have a quad turret, that's going to be firing 16 rounds per one turret, because it's quad. So each barrel will fire four shots every five seconds. 
they have the best point defense past early rate of fire four, which basically means that railguns will fire more shots until Gorse has um weight of fire four, at which point Gorse is their de facto best point defense system. They have a quick rate of fire of five seconds. Um, this is because they don't require power. They are the only um beam weapon that does not require any power. Um, and as such, they have a slated rate, uh, recharge rate, because normally your your reload rate or your recharge rate is based on your power recharging. So if a particle beam requires 5 power to reach 15 to fire, so if you need 15 power to fire and it recharges every 5, um, and if it recharges every 5 seconds and you need 5 power to get there, or you charge recharge 5 power each, that means it's going to take 15 seconds for you to fire that particle beam again. With Gorse, it's just a slated, no power, five seconds, it will always fire. So, so those are the main positives. The negatives are it's got low range, and as such, this kind of force and defensive weapon, it, you really don't get any range with Gorse weapon or Gauss weapons, my bad, uh, which means that it's really you can't use it on anything other than um, point defense systems. Um, another thing about uh, Gauss weapons as well is that um, they do one damage per hit. So they're vaporous missiles in the fact that missiles only need to be hit once to be destroyed, while ships is not going to be as effective because to get through the armor, you want to be hitting with big stri strokes and you want to be deeply penetrating instead of just piddling away with with lots of little shots against the enemy ship okay so that is what gauss weapons are and that's their negatives and their positives they are primarily the best at point defense systems putting in turrets uh, quad cannons jewel all that kind of stuff that can be very very good next we have railguns the considered that the best in the early game but second best point defense system they have the best volume of fire in the early game Firing multiple rounds per activation of the weapon. So that means every time it's activated, they'll fire four rounds at the start. Like base railguns will fire four shots every time. Which is like massive in terms of if you stack enough of them on the amount of volume of fire. Because point defense, volume of fire is what really matters if you want to get point defense systems working out for, for, for them, you know, when working overall. They have decent range and can be used for airy defense and even in ship-ship combat. So yeah, uh, railguns actually have some range. This means that you can use them in airy defense and you can also use them in ship-to-ship combat. Um, so they serve m more purposes than, than Gauss and so that is definitely an advantage they have. Um, next, they have good DPS when close to a target used to find multiple rounds per weapon activation. Yeah, if... Railguns do not just do one damage per hit, um, and that means that they fire multiple rounds, so when an enemy is close, they will deal incredible amounts of damage towards the enemy. Um, the negatives, though, are they require power, unfortunately, um, and they cannot be turreted. If they were able to be turreted, they would be the best point defense system in the game, um, but because they can't, they aren't able to track that highly so they get a massive negative overall to hit chance but in the early game because stuff is going a lot slower and also because the amount of firepower the amount of volume of fire it doesn't it can't rack that and is actually better even though it can't be turreted uh, they have damage fall off over range so yeah just like lasers they, they fall off slightly over range and so that is a negative that's why getting closer is going to do you better overall um next we have carronades uh, carronades are basically the poor man's weapon. <laughs> uh, they have the highest damage output of any beam weapon per ton, though. So they are extremely powerful if they, you can get close in. Um, they're extremely cheap uh, in terms of RP and BP. This is commonly why you will see uh, me and others use them for uh, planetary protection value um, on, like, boxes. Just just a ship that's a box with some, some carronades on it. So they're very good for like jump point defense. Uh, you need to get something out quickly, stuff like that. Um, their negatives include stuff like while they have better range than Gorse, it still massively limits their potential. They have a lot. They have low range, um, and they have better range than Gorse does, so they can be used in more ship to ship combat. But they're not that effective overall in terms of that range, and they will be outranged by stuff like lasers and particle beams. 
They also require power, so that's another negative. And basically, that'll be a common theme, is these will mostly require power, while uh, Gauss does not require power. Then we have the standard laser. Uh, lasers, they have the longest range of any beam weapon, uh, with only particle weapons coming close. This is because lasers can be put on spinal mounts. This is because um, they, they, they can be their wavelength, they can be increased, their range, they've got more flexibility, stuff like that. You can turret lasers, so that is that is, that is a thing. So they can be used for point defense. They're not that effective, though, um, due to the fact that they are more expensive and have higher tonnage um, than, than Gauss, and they also have less shots than Gauss. Um, uh, jack of all trades weapon and can do a bit of everything, ship, ship, and point defense. So yeah, they can do a little bit of everything, point defense, ship, ship, um, pretty much anything, a laser can kind of do a little bit of anything. They have access to spinal mounts and is very flexible in terms of choice. So they have access to spinal mounts, which basically will double the range of that laser that you design and will also in double the power and double the tonnage kind of, but it's going to give you much more damage and much more range, but you can only have one of them on a ship at a time. And that's where lasers really get their range from. And you'll find many times with lasers, the fire control is what holds a laser back and not its um, not its mount. Um, and it's also very flexible. There's, there's a lot of choice you can have lasers. Weight length, um, you know, size, centimeter size, um, recharge rate, um, you know, all these kind of things. So juice laser size, spinal lasers, stuff like that. Uh, while lasers do have decent DPS, higher than particle weapons, they have damage fall off, negating their range advantage. So even though they have this massive range, they're not going to be doing full damage over that spectrum of range. Um, and as such, they are not that effective at their farthest range than they are at shorter range. And so you need to be quite careful and cognizant of that when you're engaging an enemy. You need to design around that to be like, okay, where do I want to be shooting? And doing the most amount of damage, and whether I want to be able to do it, and then you have to design accordingly. They also require power, so that is another negative. Next, we have microwaves. So these are some of the more interesting weapons. Uh, microwaves ignore armor, so they just go straight through armor. They have bonuses versus shields and directly counter shields, um, and they but they directly target electric systems only. Past shield, it does no damage. It literally does zero damage. Um, they have very short range. Um, and they're quite expensive to other options, and they require power. So these are basically weapons that will disable enemy ship's electronic systems. So you can blind an enemy by taking away its sensors and active sensors, taking away their thermal systems, taking away their fire controls, stuff like that. But they'll do no actual hull damage to the ship. So that's something to be considered. That maybe maybe microwaves in a boarding sense could be quite useful, uh, being able to disable some of their electronic systems. Uh, Misons. Misons um, ignore shields and can be turreted, so they ignore shields, so they just go straight through. They can be turreted, um, and they also have a limited ability to bypass armor, with a chance per layer for armor not to stop it, based on tech that goes 50% chance, 40% chance, 30%, 40, 30%. So, for each layer it goes through, there's a chance that it will just bypass it. So, at starting tech level, it's 50% chance, then 50%, then 50%. So, the more layers, the more defensive you're going to be versus Misons. But the less layers, the easier it will be for Mesons. Um and, and then you can get tech that will decrease the chance for the armor to, to deflect it um, and not let it bypass. They also have quite short range and they do very little damage. They are fixed at one damage, um, but and they also require power. Now it comes to my favorite weapons, particle beams and particle lances. So particle beams they ha and particle lances have no damage fall off. That means unlike lasers, when they fire, they fire consistently across their entire range doing the same amount of damage no matter where they shoot at. They are the second longest range of any beam weapon, uh, meaning that they have very good range, um, though they have obviously less range than a laser. Particle lances have a unique damage pattern that does damage in a straight line into armor. So when we're talking about layers of armor, think of it kind of stacked up, um, you know, on top of each other. The boxes stacked on top of each other. Normally, a weapon will have a pattern where, you know, for a missile, it will do kind of a pyramid pattern into it. So a spearhead almost. So it'll do three damage and then one damage in the middle, down. So it'll be two deep, three damage at the base, and then one damage at the top. Kind of like a pyramid. But with uh, mesons, um, 
no, 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 the Mesons nine bad. But with Parko beams, the Parko lances, um, Parko lances in particular, uh, not the Parko beams. Parko beams have more of a standard damage band, but Parko lances, they just go through one line. So that means if you have eight layers of armor, then you do eight points of damage to go through that armor straight away. Okay, so compared with missiles, which would take more time and have to damage the the, the funnel layers before it can get into to the next one, it will just woodpecker essentially straight through the armor of the ship. They also have decent damage output. Lancers can output a lot of damage per shot, um, but that gives them poor DPS because they're quite heavy and they also require a lot of power, both particle beams and lancers. Both weapons have much worse DPS due to larger recharge times. They both require more power, and as such, their recharge times are longer. Um, and of course, they require power, so that is a negative as well. So those are all the beam weapons and their negatives and their positives that I can think of that I look at. Um, and you kind of have to think to yourself, what is best for the situation? So take a look at the screen and you can look, okay, well... If I want to design something for point defense, I don't probably don't want to put particle beams for my point defense. I probably want gauze, I want railguns, I want something else that can do that, maybe even lasers. They'll be more effective because they fit into that category better. And so that's really what you want to look at for these kinds of weapons when you're looking to design and looking to try and, and, and make a ship. Is be like, okay, well, this weapon can do this, so I should fit it to this purpose because it assumes this role. So that's what you want to be looking for. Now we're going to move on to missiles. Missiles are one of the harder things to talk about because they're pretty much everything. Um, a missile can is extremely flexible. They can do many things based off design specifications. You can design them for high damage but low speed. You can design them for high speed but low damage. You can design them for so many different kinds of things. They can have the highest damage against populations out of any weapon. One missile, highest tech, with the most amount of warhead on it, can kill 300 million uh, civilians in one hit. It can kill 300 million civilians in a hit, which is amazing. Um, they also, mi using missiles, you have access to mines, so, you know, mines that explode, not mines that you mine from, um, when they're not bugged. They're currently bugged in 1.11. Do I will make a video once 1.12 comes out on how to use mines. And also buoys and probes for other uses. So you can use buoys and probes to, to do certain things, like scout and gain information geological survey they have extra benefits on top of that um they have the most damage in one hit about any weapon as you can design a missile in many ways yeah you can design a missile with a ton of warhead strength and it will do a ton of damage in one blow that's the big part about missiles is once they hit they hit very hard um in one strike and then they take time to travel because they're traveling over great distance they also, you know, have the best range. They are the furthest range. They have the best range of any target. So that's something else to consider. They require no power plants. Um, but obviously they do require stuff like ammo and magazines, which is a negative. Um, and also fire control for that stuff. So that's something to consider. They're also the only weapon that can be stopped in flight, quote unquote. So with a beam, it's just point to point beam doing damage with a missile it has to travel through space and it can be shot down by point defense systems and so that is a negative obviously that i covered in the last episode but it's but it's something to consider as well so look at all these different weapons and think to yourself how does this benefit me how does this help me what can i put for this ship how does my fleet doctrine work with this or work with that or do well with this and that's really how you have to design it. you've got to weigh up the options look at the data think about what you want your ships to do and that's really what matters this is what this video is about really just kind of talking about the, uh, these different kinds of weapons and what they do and what they're capable of their benefits over other weapons and stuff like that i'm now going to discuss damage patterns so, I'm going to put on the screen here um, the damaged pattern template. Uh, so, that'll be on the screen. But essentially, think of it like a pyramid. Um, and at the center of the pyramid is the deepest wavelength or deepest uh, hole that is drilled into the armor. So, this is in regards to armor. Um, in the, For example, if you have five layers of armor and then you have a damaged pattern 
with a you know with a certain gradient and so that'll be on screen steve does explain it pretty well there um if it has a damage pattern you have you know one you know three five uh, seven five three one then that means that you're going to have more and more as you get in um you know o over and over and over again so it's going seven deep three deep so so on and so like that so if you have a weapon that does like one three five three one for example so let's say that was a total of um you know 13 damage right because it's a sum of the damage and then that's equivalent into the gradient and how that's affected itself then that means that it, the 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 deepest hole will penetrate five layers into the enemy uh into the enemy's armor um and that will penetrate through the armor um while it will also hit to the side particle lances as we talked about just negate any of this and just go straight through one one side they they are consistent just straight through they do not do any extra damage to any other side and this is why laces are pretty powerful because they have a gradient of three so that means that they they uh, that they the way they do their damage is very very deep i'll also have an image of like so you can visualize what it looks like um what we're gonna be what you're gonna what it's gonna look like but yeah that's kind of what damage patterns are Pretty, pretty basic explanation, and you can read more into it. I suggest you do um, on what I just put on screen. But it's something to consider as well when you're looking at weapons and trying to design weapons um, specifically. Anyway, that's pretty much it for today's episode. I'll have more episodes soon with more philosophy, more ship design. Next episode, I think I'm probably going to do a step-by-step -step, uh, ship design tutorial. Uh, so from designing the components, designing the ship, so adding the deployment time, doing all that, I'll be doing that. Um, but yeah, I hope you have enjoyed the episode. Uh, le leave your comments below on what you thought about it, and also any ideas around what weapons could be used for what. Maybe you know, making misons and microwaves more used in in gameplay stuff like that. I'll see you next time. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, bye bye. You have a great one.